Hi, this is Gilles Lee, Radio Prepper. You know I'm not a big fan of amplifiers. In my opinion, the uh, little performance increase they give you is too costly in terms of uh, the uh, current draw that uh, they give you. And of course, uh, you need a bigger battery and that's just something else to lug around. On HF, there isn't really a need for an amplifier. If you have 5 watts for CW using Morse code, or about 25 watts for voice modes, that's all you need really. But when QRP Labs uh, released the uh, 50 watt amplifier for the QCX uh, transceiver, it was hard to pass. $29, <laughs> that's nothing for an amplifier. That doesn't include the case, and I did get the case, but uh, it was very cheap, and there are some cases when uh, using an amplifier can be useful. Even I recognize that, especially on the 80 meter band for regional communications. This amplifier is very affordable, but it's a class C amplifier, meaning that it's for CW only, and maybe a few uh, digital modes, but not all of them. I mainly decided to build it, uh, buy it and build it uh, to show you guys <laughs> because uh, once again the uh, QCX is a very uh, popular kit and it's a very good radio so some people might want to add an amplifier and have a little bit more power and once again on the lower bands it can help. The kit is provided with uh, filter components for either 40, 30 or the 20 meter band. Now I want to use it on 80 meters, so I had to get my own parts. I wish Hans from uh, QRP Labs would have a separate kit for uh, other uh, bands, like 80 meters and 17 meters, that would be nice. The kit comes with a bag of components and a circuit board and two nice heat sinks. Now the case is optional, but I decided to get it because it's pretty nice and it has uh, printed faces here. So uh, all in all, for $29, you get this, the two heat sinks, and the kit itself. As you can see here, the case is fairly small, and I like that. The amplifier has to be uh, triggered by the radio. So my first order of business is to modify my QCX so that uh, I can add a jack here and trigger the amp and I have to connect uh, pin 11 of IC3 which, uh, well I'm not sure where it was <laughs> somewhere in here, but, uh, oh this one, this one here so what I have to do is connect a wire on pin 11 and uh, connect that to the jack the Hammond cast aluminum case I'm using is perfect for the QCX but it doesn't leave much room to add a jack anywhere so this is not going to be easy I don't want to dismantle it because I already had a hard time to connect everything so I don't want to take out the uh, circuit board this is the only place I can uh, put the jack I have to make uh, sure I have the correct pin and that I get 5 volts on key down And I do. The amplifier control cable has a 3.5 millimeter jack. It's just an audio cable. I have to connect the plus five volt to the ring, which is the uh, middle connection here. So we have our wire from uh, IC3 pin 11 going to the ring of the jack. And we have uh, the ground going to the sleeve. And I am going to verify, of course, that I still have uh, 5 volts on key down. Yeah, it works. Done for the QCX. Now it's time to build the kit. I'm not going to stop at every step, but I will stop at anything I deem interesting, uh, difficult or unusual. I taped together the two uh, toroid tubes for T3. I could have epoxied them, but uh, I think that'll work fine. Once the wires go through, it's not going to move. For T3, there are two turns primary and three turns secondary. So this is one turn. One turn is when the wire goes through both cores. And this is two turns, and I marked a number two here on the right side so that uh, when I have my three turns on the other side, I don't confuse them and mount the transformer backwards. And here we have our transformer. Pretty easy. For the low-pass filter, 
I can't use the uh, T50-6 provided by QRP Labs. So I got some T50-2, that's different material. That's for 80 meters. I found a schematic online uh, of a low pass filter using the steroids for 80 meters. So for L6, I'm going to have to use 24 turns. And for L4 and L7, I'll have to use 21 turns. All right, moving right along. My toroids are in place. That's for the uh, low pass filter for 80 meters. Next, we have two transformers to wind on these cores. For that, we need the uh, pairs of wire that we are going to twist together. Pretty darn nice, if you ask me. You really have to read the manual carefully when installing this transformer. Don't go ahead and just solder it without uh, testing because there are tests to do uh, between soldering wires so uh, do not install this right away and read the manual for t1 you want to make sure that the uh, wires here that will go into these pads on top come from the top of the toroid and that the wires on the bottom come from under the bottom of the toroid so it goes in like this According to the manual, the uh, most difficult part of the kit is finished. Now, you really have to read the manual before soldering the wires here because you will not solder the wires right away. You have to solder them one by one and do some continuity tests uh, while you're doing that. So definitely follow the manual. Do not go ahead and solder all the wires at once. Now come the uh, capacitors for the bandpass filter. And since I'm building it for 80 meters, I have 470 picofarads, 250 volts, and 1200 picofarads, 250 volts. 470 are C14 and C19, 1200 are C11 and C12. There was no particular difficulty for the reminder of the board. One transistor is soldered on the bottom. Now in the manual there are two sections whether you have the enclosure or not. I do have the case, so I'm going to follow that section of the manual. The heat sinks are placed like this and half of the case will be bolted on top of them. I've bolted already the three screws and here's the last one and everything fits nicely. No problem there. Now we have a nice case with the heat sink on it. Excellent, it looks good too. The uh, two transistors need to be bent upwards like this, so make sure you do it the right way. You have to place uh, silicone pads here over the case and align them perfectly with the holes. I might use some thermal grease here. Hans suggest using a, a tape, a piece of tape here to hold the pads, but I think the bit of thermal grease I'm using is just going to be sufficient. To align the pads, I'm using a drill bit that I stuck in the hole and that will be perfect. By the way, really follow the manual and do not put those screws in first here because then you can't slide the circuit board. Don't ask me how I know. <laughs> and of course, I should have followed the manual and taped the pads. This is one of those kits, guys, that you cannot skip a single sentence in the manual. Trust me on that, you'll save a lot of time and aggravation. Of course, it didn't go without a hitch and the pads are slightly too long on top. So I need to shorten them just a little. The uh, circuit board slides perfectly inside the case. So now I can put the screws in to uh, secure the transistors. And of course I took off the wrong screws to slide in the uh, circuit board. These should be off because of course they have to correspond with the holes on the circuit board. Otherwise you can't screw them back on. You have to uh, slide in the circuit board. Of course, the transistors are just not soldered. They shouldn't be soldered at this point. You slide in the circuit board BNC first. And uh, don't forget to put the nylon insulators on the screws. That's very important because the transistors have to be insulated from the case. Now we're going to test to see if uh, there is a short. So I am touching the uh, here the screw that holds the uh, transistor and the center pin, nothing, and that's good. Screw, center pin, good to go. 
I'm going to insert a little piece of plastic here between the uh, toroid and the case because it's touching and I kind of don't like that. And this is much better here where my thumb is. Now I can solder the pins of the transistor starting with the uh, right pin of Q2. That's what's recommended. That's it guys, the kit is finished. Uh, for me, it was the, uh, the mechanical part with the transistors that was the, uh, the difficulty in the kit. Not winding the toroids because I enjoy doing that, I think it's very simple, but uh, putting those screws correctly and having everything fit perfectly, uh, eh, you know, it requires a bit of attention. And of course, I uh, lost the screws <laughs> to attach the, uh, the end of the case here. I'll tell you guys, I really should have been more careful uh, reading the manual. And that's the lesson I'm taking from this build. <laughs> so don't make the same mistake. So the adjustable resistor has to be turned all the way counterclockwise. Important. I'm setting my uh, QCX to practice mode on. This way no uh, RF is uh, generated. Hopefully it's not going to start smoking when I put the power on. Well, LED is on. I get uh, 14 milliamps here uh, and I'm going to key the uh, QCX. 90 milliamps. So I have to uh, be ready. I'm going to key the QCX and turn it slowly clockwise until the uh, current just increases ever so slightly. Then I'll turn it back just a little. And that should be it. So here is my test setup here. We have the uh, QCX powered by a gel cell battery. We have the amp, an amp meter to uh, keep an eye on the current. I have my T1 tuner because I don't have a watt meter. So I'm going to use the T1 as a watt meter. It has three LEDs, green, yellow, and red. Now the power supply is only 13.8 uh, volts. So it will limit the power of the amplifier to about 25 watts. Otherwise, I would risk frying my T1 and <laughs> that's pretty expensive. So I'm going to tap here and then key the QCX, which of course I took out of the uh, practice mode and connected to the amp. So um, the reason why I'm not using my uh, QRP wattmeter is of course because it stops at 10 watts. So um, I would risk frying it too. Actually, the red LED is turning on. That's what I meant. Uh, the red LED means 10 watts or more. Success, it works. You know, I am almost tempted to get a QCX for 40 meters, get the amp without the case, and build them in the same case. Now, that would be good for uh, vehicle uh, operations. This amplifier is good for using any kind of compromise antenna when you don't have a full size antenna. And maybe 50 watt is coming out of the amp, but maybe only 5 is getting radiated. In that case, of course, it is justified to use an amplifier, but it's going to cost you current-wise. But in a vehicle, you could use a voltage converter and uh, from your 12 volt battery, uh, convert that to 20 volts, and you would have 50 watts uh, with a, an antenna for 40 meters, for instance. I might do that for my Land Cruiser, we'll see. Now, if you want to see this amplifier being used in the field, don't forget to subscribe because uh, it's coming. Have a good one.